So now that you've learned the basic fundamentals of working with Laravel and controllers and models and views, you can see that making a common blog is trivial. I can do it in minutes, less than five minutes, once you understand the steps. Uh, so now, uh, there's certainly a lot more to do, like associating a post with a user. But let's hold off on that and focus on our front end. What if you want to use SAS or less, and how are we going to construct our JavaScript? All of this factors in as well. Okay, we're going to go into our resources directory, and you're familiar with views, but you haven't yet seen assets. So you're going to see two folders here, JS and SAS. If you want to use less, that's fine as well. Let's see what we get with app SCSS. All right, so out of the box, we have a little bit of boilerplate. We pull in a custom font. We reference some SAS variables, and those variables will be specifically for Twitter Bootstrap. So this is a guide to get you started quickly, but if you have no intention of using Bootstrap, just delete all of this and start from scratch. For example, let's do something very visible, like set the background color to blue. All right, so you've updated your SAS, but now we want to compile that down, and then presumably within our views directory, maybe in our layout file, we want to reference that. So how do we do that? Okay, we'll take a look at this. We're going to use a build tool, specifically called Webpack. But even better, Laravel provides a tool called Minx, which is like a configuration layer around Webpack to make most of the things you will typically want to do as simple as calling a method. It's a lot cleaner, and it's a lot faster to get up and running. Take a look at this. If we want to write uh, the latest version of JavaScript or ECMAScript, and we want to use modules and separate our code, well, all we have to do is call a JS method. Take this file, compile it down to the JavaScript directory. So right here, find this app.js file, and we'll go over that later. But we're going to compile that down to the public slash JS folder. Let's go back. Next, we want to use SAS. But if you'd prefer less, then all you have to do is update it, and Laravel Mix will take care of the rest. It's really useful. So once again, find app.scss, and we're going to compile that down to the CSS folder. Let's take a look. Yep, there it is. So I see this, but how do I make use of it? Webpack and Laravel Mix are Node dependencies, so it's important that you have Node and NPM installed. You can either install that through Brew, or you can always go to nodejs.org and click the Download button. It'll only take just a minute. Now, once you do, you can confirm that you have it installed by checking your Node and NPM versions. Here are mine. And all I'm going to do is say NPM install. So it's like this. You know how with Composer, that will manage our PHP dependencies? Well, your package.json file can manage your Node-specific dependencies. And here, you can see that we're pulling in Laravel Mix. OK, great, that's pulled in. So now, what do we do? We'll come back and take a look at these NPM scripts. Anything you define here can be executed by saying npm run and then the name. Think of it like an alias. So if I were to do npm run dev, that will trigger this script. And it looks scary, but it's really not. Set the environment to development. Trigger webpack. I want live progress. We're going to hide some of the modules from the output. And then here's the path to the webpack configuration file that webpack will look for. OK, great. So let's give it a shot. npm run dev. It's going to compile everything down, and here's our output files. Let's take a look. In our public directory, there's the app.js, and there's our app CSS. So now we can take things like the blog from, from the template, and we can get rid of that. And instead, let's store that in our SAS file. Now, we could include a partial, but I'm just going to spit it out here for the time being. OK, so once again, I'm going to compile this down. That's all done. Next, let's return to our layout file. And if we scroll down, now we can update this to app.css. All right, let's switch back, give it a refresh, and we still get the exact same thing. But now we're writing SAS and, of course, any JavaScript that you need. Now, here's one thing, though. It's going to be pretty tedious to make a change over and over. So for example, let's bring back background is blue. Yeah, I'd have to make a change, compile it down, and then come back and refresh. Yeah, not ideal. Well, instead, let's use another script, watch. This is going to run Webpack, but register a watcher that detects any changes. It's pretty fun. So let's change this to orange. And as I save it, it will pick up on that change and recompile. 
So let's go back to Chrome, refresh, and it works. So you'll see that now I just work the way I always would, and I can ignore the terminal entirely. Pink, save, go back to Chrome, and now it's been registered. Perfect. This workflow will get you started. Now, as for your JavaScript, uh, this isn't necessarily a JavaScript series, but I'll give you the quick 30-second intro. Once again, Laravel includes some example bootstrapping code. If you want, you can delete all of it and start from scratch. But it's just giving you a guideline. For example, it begins by requiring a bootstrap file, where it pulls in Lodash and jQuery and bootstrap SAS. In general, I would recommend maybe minimizing some of these dependencies a bit, because those are fairly large. Next, we pull in the Vue framework, which is really, really good. Uh, go to viewcast.com if you'd like to learn more. Next, we pull in a tool called Axios, which is a uh, Ajax library for making Ajax requests. We set some headers, and that's about it. Next, if we scroll down, we register a Vue component. Once again, learn more at viewcast.com, but it allows you to create a single file to store a template, a script, and even the styling if you want. So yeah, this will get you started if you're familiar with Vue. But if you're not, you can delete it entirely and then begin your JavaScript as you always would. Okay, so let's get back to our PHP in the next episode.